Getting the correct parts for your equipment might sound like an easy thing to do, but you'd be surprised how often to find stuff being given away for free with the wrong parts on them. Now, that might not sound like a big deal, but if you get the wrong parts, it could seriously damage your machine, and that's if you can get it to run. That brings us to this poor mower, and it's up to us to fix what all's wrong on it caused by the last person who owned it. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Murray branded lawnmower, and the problem is that the mower starts and runs, but it shakes a lot. And because it was shaking so much for a very long time, it did a lot of damage to certain parts of the engine that we fixed in the last video. Now, I'm going to try and repair this lawnmower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. So in the last video, we found out more than likely the last person who owned this mower bought and installed the wrong blade on it. Which is kind of tough to believe because there's a sticker telling you which blade this mower needs. Now most mowers will not have a sticker telling you the part number for the blade, but there should be more than enough information from all the stickers to help you find the right one you need. And if you still can't figure it out, just reach out to a seller for the brand of mower you have and they should be able to help you. The worst answer you're going to get is that the part you're looking at will not fit your mower, but hoping to make a sale, they should be able to find the right one you need. So to get started, I'm going to carefully lay the mower on its right side so the carb is facing up and we can take a look at what we're working with. Now, I took the blade off in the last video and the reason why is because I want to show you why it's the wrong part for this mower. So what you're looking at is the blade adapter and it's what helps to couple the blade to the shaft. Now the blade they bought for this mower was a universal one, but it's not designed to fit on this style of adapter. Now I am going to go into further detail, however I also want to do one piece of needed maintenance on this engine that most don't seem to even know about. Now that bit of maintenance has to do with the valve train, specifically with the valve lash or basically the clearance between the rocker arm and the top of the valves. I'll explain it more in detail later on, but for right now, I'm going to lean the mower back to allow all the oil to leave the valve cover and also give us more access to the adapter. Now fortunately for us, the adapter was not stuck to the shaft, but don't be surprised if you have some trouble taking it off. So here's a closer look at the adapter, and what we can see is that it has three extensions to help center and lock the blade to it. The problem is that the openings in the blade don't even come close to matching it, and that's the reason why the blade was causing the entire mower to shake. Now, if I was in a desperate situation, I would probably modify either the adapter or the openings in the blade to make it work. However, I'm not in a desperate position, so I do have some options as to how to fix this. Now, of course, the easiest way to fix it would be to replace the universal blade for the correct one, but that costs money. But luckily, I happen to have a spare adapter from a parts mower that we can use in place of the odd-looking adapter. Now the only things I had to make sure was that the opening for the shaft was the same size, which it is, and the adapter was going to put the blade at the same location on the shaft. Otherwise the adapter could make the blade sit too low or even too high and cause it to have some issues while mowing. Now unfortunately the adapter I'm going to be using is still not the right one for the universal blade because it doesn't have any extensions to secure the blade. However not having any extensions is something that I can work with versus having the wrong ones. Now the biggest issue is that the opening in the adapter piece that fits in the blade is just a tad bit bigger than the bolt that holds it to the shaft. And if I can't center the blade to the bolt, it might still cause some vibrations, although it'll be better than it was before. Now this really shouldn't be that big of an issue, but if I can find an easy way to fix this, it'll make me feel a whole lot better about this repair. Now after measuring the diameter of the bolt, it turns out to be just a bit smaller than the opening in the adapter piece for the blade. And unless I want to find a bolt with a thicker shank than the threaded section, the simplest method would be to find a way to make up for that difference. Now, don't get too offended about what I'm going to do, but instead of finding a piece of metal to use, this portion of a zip tie was almost the exact size that I needed. Now, you don't have to worry too much about it being a piece of plastic because once the bolt is tight, there won't be any sort of wear on the plastic. And after getting the bolt back into the adapter, you can now see just how much better it's centered, and we can now start to put everything back together. To make sure that the adapter doesn't get stuck to the crankshaft in the future, I'm going to spray some grease on it. Now you can use almost any sort of petroleum product to do this, but I'm going to use this one because I find it convenient to use. After that, we can then install our newly centered bolt and adapter to the crankshaft and then move on to the last piece of maintenance we have to do. Now it's not what I would call a perfect fix because if it was, I would have either bought the correct blade or a different adapter. But both of those choices would have cost me even more money, so doing it this way is about the best I could do for what I had on hand. And the best part was that it didn't cost me anything except a couple of minutes of work. 
Now to do an inspection on the valve lash, you don't have to take the recoil off, but it does make it more convenient to be able to rotate the engine. I'm also going to take the spark plug out so I don't have to fight against the engine compression and also because I want to inspect the air gap for the ground, which turned out to be a really good choice because it was a bit tighter than I would like it to be. Now after making my adjustments to the ground, I'll then take off the valve cover to get access to the rocker arms. So as you can see, there's hardly any oil in the valve cover area and that's because when we had the engine leaned back, most of the oil was able to drain back to the sump. Next, I want to rotate the engine so that one of the rocker arms is tight while the other one is loose. After doing that, we'll then make our adjustments starting with the rocker arm that's loose and then we'll rotate the engine so we can do the other arm. The first thing that I want to do is to use my 5,007 inch feeler to see just how loose the clearance is. This will let me know if we need to make any adjustments. Now it should just barely fit and almost be too tight, however it turns out it's much too loose. That means the clearance here is a lot larger than 5 thousandths of an inch and will need to be adjusted. Now out of curiosity, I want to see just how large this clearance has become, so I'm going to continue to find the one that barely fits, which turns out to be the 11 thousandths of an inch feeler. Now that we know what the clearance is for the lower rocker arm, we're going to rotate the engine so the lower arm is tight while the upper one becomes loose, then we'll do the same process there. Now since we know the lower one was way out of tolerance, I'm going to start by using the thicker gauge to begin with just to save time. And it looks like that was a really good choice because it turns out the upper rocker arm's clearance was even more at 12 thousandths of an inch. What that means was that both were way too loose and need to be tightened back up. Fortunately for this model, all you have to do is turn the nuts to adjust them and first we'll start by making them loose. I'll then get out the 5 thousandths of an inch feeler and then slip it under the loose rocker arm. Once under it, I'll then start to turn the nut to tighten it and at the same time try to keep the feeler gauge moving so that I can tell when it starts to get stuck under the arm. We want to make the clearance just large enough so that the feeler gauge just drags between the valve and the rocker arm. After that, I'll then rotate the engine again so that the other rocker arm will be loose and we'll do the same process here. Now on this rocker arm, I ended up turning the nut just a bit too far and the feeler gauge got stuck under the arm, which is not what we want. In that case, just turn the nut the other direction until it's loose again and then try it again. Now for those of you who may not know why this clearance is so important to maintain, let me explain it. The clearance is there to help for the expansion of metal when the engine gets hot, but over time these clearances change mostly by getting larger. So when the clearances become too far off, especially when it's several times larger than it should be, this will affect how the engine starts and runs. I won't go too far into it other than that, but if you want your engine to be easy to start when it's hot or cold, then keeping the clearances in tolerance will help out a lot. Now there was a cut in the insulation of the spark plug wire from the top cover as a result of all the vibrations, but an easy fix to this issue is to cover the wire with some rubber tubing, but there are multiple ways to fix it. We could have obviously just replaced the ignition coil, but since the wire was not completely broken, it's not necessary, so this fix is more than enough. So as you just saw, the mower started easily, even with a very soft pull from a six-year-old. But now we need to see if it'll start back up while the engine is still hot. Now this time it took two pulls to get it to start, but at least it tried to start on the first pull. So it wasn't a resounding success, but at least it started and it's still much better than having to pull on the rope a half dozen times. Now since I wasn't able to do an oil change on this engine, now would be a great time since the oil is really hot. So what you're seeing me do is take off the side chute because I don't want to risk breaking it again while I tip the mower on its side. Of course, I could just tie the chute in the up position, but there's still a small chance that I could damage it. So taking it off, at least in my opinion, is the safest way to do an oil change on one of these cheap mowers. And it looks like it's a good thing that we're doing this because it looks like this oil has a lot of metal in it. Now old oil would be very dark in color, but when it looks like this, it means this oil might be the original break-in oil. Now if for some reason you don't want to do yearly oil changes on your mower, then at least do one after the first season of use. 
Now after the first oil change, you can then just keep it full by adding oil to it when it gets low, but getting rid of that break-in oil is very important to do. Now of course it is your mower, and if you want to leave the side chute on when doing your oil change, then that's fine by me. And to be honest, if you don't want to do any oil changes, that's your choice as well, but just don't complain to me when your mower starts to have issues a couple of years after you bought it. So how would I sum up what happened to this very inexpensive mower then? Well, it would seem that whoever owned it before treated it with very little care, and when it came time to invest some money into it, they not only bought the cheaper option, but they also bought the wrong one that led to its basic destruction. Now, fortunately, we were able to fix all the parts that were broken on this mower for no money, which is the best part. So you can cheap out on fixing a mower like this one, but you have to know what you're getting yourself into as well, which they clearly didn't. So if you don't know what to do or you have too many questions on how to repair something, don't be afraid to ask anyone, a relative, a neighbor, or maybe even post it up on here. I'm sure someone here has a couple of minutes to answer your questions, and at least if the part is wrong, you can blame them instead. Now as for this mower, it's now ready to be used a couple of times and only then will it be ready for sale. However, I don't expect to get a lot of money for it, but the challenge was somewhat satisfying and at least we were able to save a mower from the landfill. So my question is, have you ever ran across a mower like this one where someone installed one if not more of the wrong parts on it, and if so, whatever happened to it? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.